Uh, welcome back. <laughs> Joining us this morning, we've got Chef Anthony Fisher from Pittsburgh High School Culinary Arts Program. Joining us in the Chef Anthony Test Kitchen. And I'm not going to lie, I am, I'm slightly disappointed because during the commercial break, we were watching Phil as he was about to be pulled out of his little hollow tree to find out if he saw a shadow or not. And then it looked like he was about to pull him out when we went on air. So There he is. Has he going to see a shadow? I don't know. We can't hear the audio. Let's see. Well. Has he seen it? I don't He's know. He's being presented. Has he seen it? Well, you never know. But let's keep warm today. They, they haven't announced whether he's seen it. It looks pretty cloudy about in uh, Gobbler's Knob, though. So. Does that help him not to see a shadow? Yes. If it's cloudy, then there's no shadow because there's no sun to cast a shadow. Oh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. So if it's sunny, then he would see his shadow. And then you have six more weeks of winter. Wow. And we don't want that. No. But if it is going to be cold, you want to make something that's going to warm you up. And that's what we're doing this morning. Yes. We're making a pizza pie. Yes, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So we're going to talk about a little bit about the dough. We're getting it ready to go. It's been in my car on the drive over here, so it's a little cold. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. warm it up. Um, trying to knead some warmth back into yes. it. Yes. So two eggs, or excuse me, two packages of yeast. Okay. Two teaspoons of salt and some sugar and warm water. And start your yeast, let it come alive, come back to life. And then we're going to take two thirds of a cup of sugar and three quarters of a cup of oil, two eggs, and we're going to mix those together in a bowl. And then we're going to slowly add our yeast and our flour together until you get a dough that looks something like what I got right here in my hand. So you've got, how much flour did it take to make this much? Seven cups. Seven cups and two packages of yeast? Yep. Wow. And you can cover this. That is a lot. And put it in the refrigerator. Okay. And it will just keep on going. You can use that all week long. So how long has this been rising for so far? They made that yesterday during the seventh hour, so about two thirty. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was in your car on the mm -hmm. way here, so it was. Slow, trying really to slow cool. down the <laughs> slow down the rising process. It didn't quite work very well. Mm. But it's an easy dough to make. It's easy to use. And, and how long does it last? It. Like keep about for seven you? ten days. Okay. So you can make so, fresh bread all week long. Yeah. And then this is your mother's recipe. Actually, this is my grandmother's recipe, grandmother's that, my mom, recipe. that my mom taught us mm. because my brother used to make cinnamon rolls out of it. Ah, uh, yeah. So he would make cinnamon rolls. She would make rolls throughout the week for dinner and make life real easy for all of us. Okay. So, but this was this uh, pizza that we're doing was something that we would have when she made the bread dough. So we were always excited. I have some breaking news. Just in. Phil saw his shadow. I'm sorry, four states. That means six more weeks of winter. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Would you like some good news, though? Yes, please. Okay, so we all love Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. What coordination was Whitney Houston famous for? Coordination? Mm -hmm. Like, I... Hand I, I. <laughs> Oh, okay, you got me there. That was good. So, now you're smiling. You're not upset anymore. That works. <laughs> I'm just going to roll this out. What I have here is I like to use a flan pan. There's okay. nothing special about this other than the fact that the scalloped edges, I can actually roll. Why is it called a flan pan? It's just the pan. It's the design that comes along. Okay. It because if you lay everything in correctly, you turn it over onto its plate and pop it out makes a beautiful design. Mm -hmm. It was originally designed to make flan. Okay. So, but I like this one because at the end, the sharp edges, I can roll my rolling pin across it and cut my dough into oh, the pan. Oh, it's so sharp. Oh, nice. Okay. So it makes just, makes a little bit of fun a little easier when you're putting it together. Mm -hmm. You can you actually do, this is designed to be used in a regular pie pan, but there's no way to help cut it. Then you just have to peel off the edges. You yeah. have to peel off the edges and scallop the edges and mm -hmm. This is just an easy way to do it. So, but we'll roll it out. Roll it out as thin as you can want. What is your preference on thickness for something like this type of, for a pizza? I mean, I you to, know, pizzas, some people like them thin, some mm -hmm. people like them thick. Obviously, it's gonna adjust your cooking time. I am time. a huge fan of a cracker thin crust, but for this particular one, because it is a pie, um, I try to get a little bit thicker. Now, the one that we're gonna have that I made and is in the oven right now, my students made for you last night. Oh. So they were learning all about it at Culinary Club last night and having a little bit of fun. 
So we're going to see how thick they made it. Okay. I'm excited. Excited but, to see what they put in it, too. Uh, one of the things I want you to uh, want to show is that everybody's always, well, I can't pick it up when it's really thin. Just grab your rolling pin, hold your rolling pin, pull your fingers right up on it like that. And it'll Let roll it roll right up, up and then you can roll it right and Exactly. It. You just roll it right over your pan. Okay. Makes life real easy. Now this particular dough likes to stretch. So you're going to have to get it warm and you're going to have to keep rolling it until you get it out bigger than what you want it to be. Okay. So we're not going to quite get it as big as I wanted. It's still quite cold, but I wanted to show how easy it is. But we have a rough kind of guess. Oh, and you don't even have to roll it. You can just pop it into Well, there. then it becomes yeah. too small for the inside of the pie oh, pan. okay. So I'm kind of laying it on here, just getting an idea of what you it needs to be. Wide, yeah. And I'll keep going a little bit more till I'm about an inch or two wider than my pan. And I don't use the traditional rolling pins with the handles. I like these French rolling pins because I can put even pressure all the way onto it. I have the others. Well, how do you keep the dough from sticking to your rolling pin? I know that's always an issue with uh, like just sometimes flour. Just flour. Because I don't see a lot of flour. of flour going on here. Well, so. I've played with this one and it's taken all the flour it needs to take so it's not going to stick on me. Okay. It has a little bit of oil in the dough itself, so that helps. And there's all types of tricks that you can get. Um, this one, this oil pen also gets oiled on a regular basis, so that no matter what I pick it up to use it for, it's gonna, it's not gonna stick. Okay. So. Are we getting close? We're getting close, and what I'll do is I'll roll this up, and I'll just lay it right into my pan. Okay. And if I'm a little shy, that's okay, because like I said. Because you the, can stretch it too. Yeah, the dough stretches a little bit. And you can practice, this dough is really fun to sit and try and practice tossing dough with the kids because it is so resilient. So once you get it over your edges, then you can just mm. form it down. And when we come back on the KOA Morning News on Fox 14, we are going to fill the pie and then eat the pie. <laughs> I guess we bake it first. But yeah, looking forward to that. We're going to have some fun on the next one. All right. Well, we will be right back.